This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, rabbit numbers reach plague proportions at Moiraki. The South Today catches up with one of the youngest speakers for Psychology Week. And the Queenstown Lakes District Council is accused of turning one of its busiest streets into a bus station. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Rabbit numbers have reached plague proportions at Moiraki. Residents who can't shoot the pests in urban areas are looking forward to the release of a new rabbit killing virus. Moiraki is crawling with rabbits. That's the word from residents who say the numbers on the peninsula are out of control. The infestation has taken hold over the last few weeks with rabbits visible in local camping grounds, on roadsides and in gardens. Residents are pinning their hopes on the release of a new strain of the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus because they are not allowed to shoot rabbits in urban areas. Retiree Brian Todd of Hampton last month began hunting and says he could take out a thousand rabbits in a couple of weeks. They just keep breeding and breeding, and they're breeding faster than anyone can kill them, you know. Moraki lawnmower operator Mark Brady says hundreds of rabbits of all shapes and sizes had devoured so much grass some areas didn't need cutting. Oh, definitely the last two years, I reckon, it's quite noticeable there's more rabbits, yeah. Yeah, it's um, the old story of for every one you see, there's ten you don't see. And um, just driving around the roads, you can quite often see 50 or 60 rabbits in a couple of k's, you know, just on the tar's heel. I think the, the virus has lost its impact now and they're just carrying on. An application to import the new strain of the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus has been made to the Ministry for Primary Industries and is being consulted on at present. Otago Regional Council Director of Environmental Monitoring and Operations Scott McLean says if approved, the virus would be available by autumn next year. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. The current emergency closure of some fisheries along the coast of Kaikoura is being extended to help the marine environment affected by the 2016 earthquakes to recover. An emergency closure applying to all shellfish, shellfish and seaweed was imposed after the 2016 quakes. MPI Acting Director of Fisheries Management Steve Halley says the earthquakes had a devastating effect on the coastline between Marfellas Beach and the Conway River, raising the seabed by seven, several metres in some areas. Halley says losing fishing grounds in the area has put more pressure on neighbouring areas around Marlborough and Canterbury. Further scientific studies to measure the impact of the quakes will be undertaken during the closure. This week has been Psychology Week with lectures and events held across the country. The South Today met up with one of the week's youngest keynote speakers. Nursing student Ashley Smith gave a talk last night in Dunedin on the well-being of today's youth. She was invited as a speaker not just because she is youthful herself, but also because she is the founding member of an organisation aimed at empowering adolescents. I'm part of an organisation called Sticks and Stones and we're all about empowering young people to be the experts. So we believe in a community where every single young person can grow up feeling accepted and respected for who they are. That's our big dream. So it's our young people that actually make that happen. Uh, we've got young people in schools right through around Central Targo and Otago and they're in schools every day creating resources for their peers, they're standing up to the things they're seeing around them, they're challenging hate and like, that's amazing. The outcomes that we have from that are incredible because we empower them to make the decisions and it has such an amazing impact on their peers. Ashley was awarded the Queen's Young Leader Award in recognition of her efforts in creating Sticks and Stones and she is all for the empowerment of youth. I believe that every single young person in this country and even the world is, is passionate about something and if we can ignite that passion in them and, and then empower them to be the experts and make their own decisions in that environment then they can achieve amazing stuff. It can be pretty life changing. Many are concerned technology is overwhelming our society but as a young person Ashley disagrees. 
I think when we talk about technology we can sometimes see it as quite a negative thing, especially in social media and when we're talking about young people. It's actually extremely positive and most of the interactions that young people have online are actually very positive on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think you know technology is really going forward, it is expanding, but and we do need to be doing some more work to keep up from it. But for me, that work needs to come from the young people that are actually having those experiences. Ashley has been a young person standing up as a youth advocate. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Otago's emergency management staff are preparing for the first test of a national alert system, which will warn of serious threats. The new system automatically sends a short message to all cell phones capable of receiving the alerts, switched on and within an area of mobile phone coverage. It uses cell broadcast technology, meaning there is no need to sign up or download an app to receive the service. Any enabled phone within range should receive the messages. Chris Hawker, Director of Emergency Management at Otago, says the new mobile alerts are an additional way of keeping Otago's community safe in emergencies. The test will take place on Sunday the 26th of November between 6 and 7 p.m. Queenstown businesses are worried three new bus stops on Camp Street to cater for the new $2 bus service starting Monday will cause major disruption to their businesses. Downtown Queenstown manager Steve Wilde is criticising the Queenstown Lakes District Council for turning one of the town's busiest streets into a bus station. Camp Street in central Queenstown is one of the resort's busiest streets. And with the new $2 bus system launching on Monday, downtown Queenstown manager Steve Wilde says it's going to get chaotic. Nowhere on this street is ideal for buses. There will be four Camp Street bus stops. One is next to the Village Green, one outside the ASB Bank across the road, a third is next to O'Connell's Mall and a fourth outside KFC. Wild says having two million passengers a year milling around Camp Street buses is going to be dangerous. It will affect businesses. So you've got uh, diesel fumes pouring into your shop doorways. Uh, you'll have uh, people lining up to get on the buses blocking uh, the doorways of shops. And then of course also for just general people trying to walk the pavement. And Wild says the Camp Street bus stops plan is supposed to be an interim solution while the council looks at an arterial route on Stanley Street. Centre Master Plan has the new arterial route going in in 2023. I know there is some serious work going on behind the scenes to bring that forward because for every month that goes by that we don't have the arterial, there's chaos in our, in our downtown area. And he argues a better interim solution for the $2 buses is to use the Athol Street Tourists Bus Depot. Well, we haven't heard any compelling reasons why it can't work yet. So they need to come back to us with specific reasons of why Athol Street can't work. And coming back and saying that it costs too much is not a valid reason as far as we're concerned. However, Queenstown Lakes District Council's Head Infrastructure Planner, Tony Picard, says... Athol Street was discarded from consideration as a public transport hub for reasons such as size, circulation and the need to replace the current services. Downtown Queenstown has asked us to consider it again as a longer term interim location, which we have agreed to do. Parking ambassadors have been advising people on the changes and the loss of 15 minute car parks. So, from Monday, motorists looking for a short-term park on Camp Street will have to find somewhere else if they are to avoid a parking fine. Mina, I'm so the South today. Still to come on the South today, Queenstown prepares for its international marathon tomorrow with a record number of runners registered and organisers of the Sunday's charity car cruise hope to raise more than $5,000 for the Otago Community Hospice. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. My elves and I just love coming to Alex Campbell's, that's my favourite shop. I always get good value here, and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. Look at these teas, local beaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud.
how to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. At the Otago SPCA, our role is to make sure that all animals in Dunedin and the Otago region are being looked after properly. Otago SPCA offer a haven for animals in need and adoption opportunities for the community. We appreciate your interest and support. For help and advice, we're on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have any concerns, give us a call. Gillians care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, Care and support makes all the difference, and Gillians know this. They're here for you when you need it most. From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, Gillians will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gillians, caring for families in our communities since 1962. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. While you're relaxing this holiday season, Ready Lawn is available to help you with your lawn needs, big or small. We work so you don't have to. Call Ready Lawn today. They're part of the family, and like us, their health begins with what they eat too. So give them Radical Dog, made in New Zealand from all natural ingredients and real tart cherries, so it's high in antioxidants. It's a three-in-one superfood, giving them energy, flexibility and a healthy coat. With no fillers or nasty preservatives, they love them. It's the treat that can work wonders on every dog, no matter what their breed, age or health. Radical Dog, the new generation in dog food. University of Otago. Usually the atmosphere is charged with the energy of student life. But this week is the week before exams. Hey, Tain. Not now, man. I'm panicking. Come on, mate. I know just what you need. In here? No, no. Is this it? No. This is the place to ease your stress. Hey, Tain. Fancy a little cuddle? Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday afternoons, 4.30. Welcome back. A record 9,720 runners have registered for Queenstown's International Marathon tomorrow. Of those, more than 1,800 will compete in the full marathon, with the rest taking part in the event's first half marathon and 10k runs. The event is estimated to bring $8.5 million into the Queenstown economy. Air New Zealand put on an extra 3,000 seats to accommodate the runners, 90% of whom are from outside Queenstown. A number of road closures will be in place and motorists have been advised to check Queenstown Lakes District Council website for details. Organisers of this Sunday's charity car cruise in Dunedin say they're hoping to give more than $5,000 to the Otago Community Hospice. The annual fundraising car cruise has raised more than $24,000 in its seven-year history. This is what accelerating in a Dodge Hellcat feels like. The six-figure supercharged American car was lent to charity cruise organiser Ken Schumacher by Mark's Cars. 
and Schumacher hopes it'll be on display this Sunday. She belongs to Mark Mitchell. Mark's one of our sponsors, so he'll be there on Sunday uh, with a couple of his cars as well. So he very kindly donated this for our little chat this afternoon and drive around town. In its eighth year, the car cruise has raised funds for the Otago Community Hospice every year and Schumacher believes their donations are always well used. Every year it's the same thing as um, they need all the money they can get so we're, we're quite happy to, you know, they'll, uh, they'll always receive our funds so next year and the year after and many years to come. The annual fundraising car cruise is open to all comers but there are prizes for the best cars in a host of categories. The guys with the flash cars, they'll be there for the judging, so we have uh, six categories. Um, best American, best Japanese, best Australian, best English, European and best motorbike. So we've got great trophies uh, and prizes to, to give out after the presentation, which will be about, about one o'clock, about three hours, four hours into it. He says it costs five dollars to enter a vehicle in the cruise, with cars beginning to gather at Tahuna Park on Victoria Road, Dunedin, from nine o'clock this Sunday morning. The cruise is expected to depart to Huna for a drive to Mosgiel and back from 1.30pm. As he pulls away to return the car safely to its owner, it's clearly obvious to hear the Dodge Hellcat is not an electric car. Darrell Beza, The South Today. Relics from Christmas past are being showcased at the Dunedin Public Library's Red Gallery Heritage Christmas Exhibition. Staff at the library have been digging into the archives searching for old-fashioned highlights of the festive season. These are some of the Christmas treasures that have emerged from the Dunedin Public Library for its latest Heritage Exhibition. The exhibition is a look back on the Christmas annuals, magazines, children's stories, craft and cookery books of New Zealand's yesteryear. The exhibition shows a little bit, it shows the movement from the very um, Northern Hemisphere centred types of illustrations, um, you know, with snow and sleigh bells and sleighs and things like that, through to uh, the more Kiwiana type Christmas with Pohutukawa trees and things like that. Earlier material from the um, Rare Books collection includes things like um, early editions of A Christmas Carol by Dickens. So, you know, we're going back into the 19th century and right through up to pretty much the present day. Also on display is a collection of vintage Christmas cards. A.H. Reid collected and gave to the library and also a collection of Christmas cards that a former city librarian, Ada Fash, had collected and left in the library. And Christmas theme books are seeing the light of day again with special items from the McNabb Troopship collection. First established by um, the city librarian W.B. McEwen just after the First World War he decided that troopship magazines were something that would disappear if nobody made the effort to collect them so he started advertising for them and collecting them for the library and we've continued that tradition on through the Second World War. The exhibition is on until February. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. After the break on The South Today, Dunedin's Bathgate Park School receives a visit from a cycle safety team as part of a nationwide initiative and we have tomorrow's weather for you. For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's Pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's Pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's Pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's Pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. My elves and I just love coming to Alex Campbell's, that's my favourite shop. I always get good value here, and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. Look at these teas, local peaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Gillians care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, care and support makes all the difference. And Gillians know this. They're here for you when you need it most. From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, 
Gilliams will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gilliams, caring for families in our communities since 1962. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. At the Otago SPCA, our role is to make sure that all animals in Dunedin and the Otago region are being looked after properly. Otago SPCA offer a haven for animals in need and adoption opportunities for the community. We appreciate your interest and support. For help and advice, we're on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have any concerns, give us a call. Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty. So if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. While you're relaxing this holiday season, Ready Lawn is available to help you with your lawn needs, big or small. We work so you don't have to. Call Ready Lawn today. They're part of the family. And like us, their health begins with what they eat too. So give them Radical Dog, made in New Zealand from all natural ingredients and real tart cherries so it's high in antioxidants. It's a three-in-one superfood, giving them energy, flexibility and a healthy coat. With no fillers or nasty preservatives, they love them. It's the treat that can work wonders on every dog, no matter what their breed, age or health. Radical Dog, the new generation in dog food. Loss of collagen is the reason for those fine lines and wrinkles. Silverhorn's Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Joints, tendons, ligaments and cartilage all benefit from healthy collagen levels, the very foundation of structural health. Support collagen levels naturally with Collagen Plus by Silverhorn. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call now 0800 502 402. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday afternoons 4.30. Thanks for staying with us. Throughout the nation, teams of cycle safety instructors visit primary schools to educate youngsters in safe cycling. This week it was South Dunedin's Bathgate Park School who the City Council's cycle safety team visited, where they found varying skill levels. Like with all transport, with cycling you need to know when to go and when to stop. Cycle safety educators from the Dunedin City Council have been at Bathgate Park School this week putting children through their paces. We're just here to introduce the children to riding their bikes and the skillful riding of their bikes so they can control them, so they can do signalling, so they can look behind, sort of preparing them for going on the road. Adrian Mulqueen says like with all schools, there is a wide range of skill levels, from pupil to pupil and even teachers. Um, there are some children that we taught to ride last time we were here and they haven't been on a bike since. So um, they're kind of progressing. They progress really fast in just a couple of days. She says there are programs like this one in operation all across Aotearoa, New Zealand, with one recently starting in Invercargill. Mana is one of the more skilled riders and was concentrating furiously on a slow race while we chatted. So what part of the skills are you learning right now? Slow race and yeah. What do you think it teaches you? Adam? What do you think it teaches you? I don't know. Well, Maybe it helps teach dogs? Yeah. Cool. How do you think you're doing? Good. The cycle skills educators typically spend a week at each school sharing many tips for safe riding. Mal Queen says youngsters need hours of practice before riding on the road and shares one of the most obvious ways to keep safe while cycling, wearing helmets. It does a lot, you know, if you fall off your bike and your head hits the kerb, 
um, it's going to protect you from some brain damage hopefully and uh, yeah, it does save lives and it saves brains. She says it's great if parents or caregivers can ride with children as it cements the learning and can be a fun way to exercise. Daryl Baser, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Moiraki residents who can't shoot feral rabbits in ur urban areas are looking forward to the release of a new rabbit killing virus. It's Psychology Week with lectures and events held across the country, featuring one of this week's youngest keynote speakers. And Queenstown businesses are worried three new bus stops catering for the new $2 bus service will cause major disruption on Monday. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Paul Gorman. What have you got for us today? Okay, just about the weekend again, so big ODT tomorrow. Um, got quite a good mixture of stories. Uh, probably the most important story is we've got 12 urologists landing in Dunedin from around the country to deal with a backlog of um, uh, people's procedures that need to be done. There's about 300 will be done this weekend. So that's good news for people that have been on a waiting list there. Yeah, there'll be some very happy people after yeah, this weekend, hopefully. So. Um, we've got more on the Victorian Heritage um, celebrations in Omaru, including a photo which uh, had us laughing. So hopefully everyone will have a look at that and spot the odd thing out in it. There's something in it that's not quite right for a Victorian um, heritage picture. Oh, is it a watch or something? Uh, it's a bit bigger than a watch, so <laughs> see if you can spot that. Um, c contractors have also found a tunnel underneath Great King Street, which could be 100 years old. So a subterranean Dunedin story there. And we've got a story on someone who's making jewellery out of cheese, which is quite interesting. Uh, I presume it's hard cheese and not, you know... Yeah, not, not a brie or, or a or Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's a good story. And in the mix tomorrow, um, there's a piece on Stephen Eldred Gregg's book, Phony War, in which he talks about whether New Zealanders should even have gone into World War II. And also a look at what design students at Polytech have been coming up with. Um, and we've got the Santa Parade preview coming up as well. So. Wonderful. Well, definitely something to look forward to for tomorrow's ODT. Thank you, Paul. And now, for time for a look at tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Collagen Plus. And starting with a look at the Southern Ocean from St. Clair Esplanade. Looking at the situation, the anti-cyclone, which doesn't want to go away, remains in the Tasman Sea and looks likely to stay for three or four more days yet. But that's good news for some as it will bring fine dry weather to the southern districts through the weekend. To the south southern outlook, Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden, you can all expect light winds, fine and 16 degrees. And westwards to central, everyone there is in for light winds and fine weather. Alexandra 19, Wanaka 17 and Queenstown and Tiana, you both are on 16 degrees. Travelling northwards to Omaru and Timaru, you can expect light northeasterlies, fine and 16 degrees. And it's pretty much the same for Amarama and Twiza with a high of 17 degrees. Here in Dunedin tonight, clouds should clear with an overnight low of 8 degrees. Tomorrow is mostly fine and sunny with light northeasterlies and 16 and 5. And it's the same for Sunday with 17 and 5, so it's a nice weekend for Dunedin. And in Ambercargill tonight, becoming fine with an overnight low of 4. Tomorrow mostly fine and sunny with light westerly winds, 16 and 5. And it's the same for Sunday with 16 and 5 degrees for you. So a lovely weekend for Ambercargill as well. And that's our news for this Friday. For the latest news from the South Today team, you can follow us on Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.